Good morning. Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution. Welcome to Good Morning Revolution. Well, everybody, I hope you're doing good. You survived COVID. You got your first and second shot. I just read this morning that they administered a billion doses of COVID uh, in India. Of course, they got 1.3 billion people, so only 20% of the people are vaccinated so far, thanks to the incompetence of that right-wing government. But we have experience with that with Trump, speaking of incompetence, but we're not going to go there initially this morning. Let's talk about the party and the party building. Rosanna, I heard you say the other day that 400 people have joined the Communist Party in the last month. Is that true? Uh, yes, I think so. If our numbers are correct, I think, yeah. We have we oh. have a uh, joining. I think um, you know people are looking for an alternative, and we are it. You got that right. We are an alternative. In fact, we'd like to think that we are the alternative, Scott, and uh, you know that we got it. We we got it going on, and uh, hopefully, if people. Then we got to prove it, you know, we got to prove it by our practice and, you know, uh, be uh, in the uh, vanguard of struggle, don't you think? We become the alternative precisely by proving it in our practice, right? Uh, those are separable things. So you just can't talk to talk, you got to walk to walk, Michael. <laughs> you got to get out there and, you know, um, organize uh, other people, hold some demonstrations in concert with others, occupy some Wall Street, you know, take over some, get involved in some sit-ins, get arrested, hopefully you won't go to jail, get elected, <laughs> uh, organize get on picket strikes. Lines. Get on picket lines. Get on Help the with picket strike lines. October. Yeah. Striketober, Anita, we're living in Striketober. There are big strikes all over the place. Uh, and amazing. that's a wonderful thing. It is, uh, de and, definitely. And we gotta do strike support. We gotta get out there and support. You know, there've been 169 strikes this year mm. all over the country. It's a, this is the biggest strike action since 2018, 2019 when the teachers went out first and those wildcat strikes, and then it ended up with the auto workers striking. And, uh, and now the workers down below are starting to flex their muscles. Uh, yeah, Rosanna, sure. we're gonna be talking about all of that at the uh, National Committee meeting of that's the right. Communist Party next weekend on Halloween day. Yeah, that's right. Nothing Bring spooky, your mask. just all good. Yeah, uh, who are you gonna come as? I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go out to, you know, there's a, a store here in New York that sells costumes and masks and all of that kind of thing. I think I'm gonna go there and, and get me a mask for Halloween. Hmm. I'm not quite sure who I'm gonna go as. If you had a, went out and bought a mask, Michael, uh, to come to the National Committee meeting, who would you come as? I probably would have been lazy. I would have gotten a big Santa Claus beard and maybe put a little gray in it and go with Mark's. So you want to come <laughs> as Santa Claus and give away free presents, you know? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. the notion there is communism is free stuff or free Free dumb? stuff, yeah. The nightmare before Christmas. That's what. <laughs> nightmare before Christmas. Who would you come as, Anita, if you had? Uh, don't you ask me. Me. <laughs> I'm, I'm really not bad at that, but. But I, um, I, w I just want to say one thing about the, the uh, recruitment drive to follow up on what Rosanna said about 400. I can totally believe that because I think Ohio has definitely gotten our share of that 400. We have a lot of new members coming in from all over the place, the cities and the outlying areas. And it's, it's just really great. And we're getting those good leaflets out to everybody. So yeah, I, I, I can't think of what I would come to I think I will come to the National Committee meeting just as an Ohio resident. That's it. As an Ohio resident. Don't wear the mask of the governor. I mean, don't, don't, don't try to, uh, <laughs> to 
But there's some great revolutionaries in Ohio that, that use this time as. Uh, aren't you the chair of the, uh, what's the name of your club? Uh, it's the Anna Haas Morgan Club. And yes, you're right. I could come as Anna Haas Morgan. Uh, she was a, a real a revolutionary and a, a local hero of ours. Um, she would be, a, that's a good choice. Thank you. Good, there you go. Idea. Scott, who would you come to the NC uh, if you mm. could get a mask to, who would you come as? The declining rate of profit. <laughs> you want to come as a decline? <laughs> huh? No, uh, probably Lenin. Lenin, oh my God. Okay, you got pretensions of grandeur going on. Okay. You know, get a little goatee. There you go. All right. Well, my hair was big and uh, curly. People always said I looked like Trotsky, but obviously oh. you can't come to a national committee meeting dressed like Trotsky. So. <laughs> Not to the Communist Party, some seem to be. Maybe <laughs> to one, to one of them Trotsky groups. <laughs> uh, there might be some people who will want to counter you by coming as Joe Stalin, so be careful. <laughs> that, would, that would not be a good thing. Rosanna, who would you come as? Oh, I don't know. I've never, I've never been into Halloween and all of that, no? so mm. I, don't, okay. I don't know. My mom was good at it, so she loved it, but not. Quite, not, not quite your thing. Fair no. enough, fair enough, <laughs> fair enough. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna hold mine till next Sunday. You, you, you'll see I'll don the mask and uh, you'll see. Hopefully I won't scare the NC away. <laughs> That's always a danger. So I wanna start with a question, you know, we're building our membership and we have people who are joining and asking questions. And we got a mailbag question this morning uh, from a young person living in these United States. and. They said that they, they, they want to help build the revolutionary uh, movement and they're looking for a book. They said, uh, Communist Party USA, what's the best book I could, I could read in order to prepare myself for revolutionary struggle? Michael, you have a recommendation to this young, well, young, young person? My personal favorite is I like Lenin's left wing communism and infantile disorder. And I think I like it because I always go back to it every time uh, the youth and I here in New York, the young comrades, we get frustrated about something that's going on. Things aren't happening fast enough or the way that we have it going on in our head. And we always go, it was written in 1920. So three years after the, the October revolution of 1917 and Lenin kind of shifts uh, away from the uh, state and revolution that he wrote that was really provided in the context of um, 1917 Russia. And he was looking towards the kind of Western uh, European uh, communist parties. And he kind of critiqued them. He critiqued them, uh, the, the parties in Germany and Britain, for not wanting to get involved with trade unions. You know, they were too revolutionary for the trade unions. They thought they were too good for the electoral struggle. They thought they were too revolutionary and then radical to make compromise. And he said, no, 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 you have to do this on the on the road uh, to revolution, okay. on the road to socialism, because the class struggle is more of a marathon than a sprint, as uh, Rosanna always says. And so that's one of my favorite books. But um, I, th I, I think it has to be more than just reading. It has to be more than just reading. You have a friend that says that's the best that's the book that the revisionists always quote. <laughs> We're not going to go there, which I think is an outrageous <laughs> statement, but that's another. Anita, what, what book would you uh, recommend? Thank you. Uh, I was going to, uh, I was going to, Michael already took us there, but I was going to recommend that he just put the book down and go outside and go on that picket line and have some real deep conversations with his um, fellow working class people, because that's really uh, sitting at home and reading a book, this is a heresy coming from a professor, but sitting and reading a book is not going to get you there. Uh, you, you need to build uh, the working class autonomy and, and consciousness and, uh, and independence. And uh, I think the best way is to get out there and really talk to other people. So you're and following read the Communist Engels, Manifesto at night. So. Engels, a dictum that uh, a, how did they, there go uh, a um, <clears throat> ounce of real movement uh, is better than a pound of uh, party manifestos or something like that. Scott, what book would you recommend? 
Scott, what book would you it's really recommend? A, it's really a tie for me. Um, since the question was, I think, um, for making revolution in the United States, uh, I'm going to say um, uh, Eric Foner's book, um, uh, Reconstruction, America's Unfinished Revolution, uh, which is a, a tremendous portrayal of the way that the struggle for democracy happens and the way that it uh, the struggle for um, political equality across racial lines, the struggle against white supremacy and against slavery uh, also lifted up um, uh, the entire uh, working class. Um, on the other hand, uh, Lenin's Two Tactics, which talks about similar things really, the relationship between the struggle for democracy and the struggle for socialism and why the working class has to lead the struggle for democracy at every, every stage. Okay, good enough, two, you got two. Uh, two good ones, two, I might say. Uh, Rosanna, what book would you recommend to this young person who, who wants to get well, involved my, in the struggle? My response is that there is no manual to it. You know, there mm. are different changing conditions de depending on what's going on at the moment. And so that there is no there is no manual. Unfortunately, I wish there was. I think we would, you know, get there faster. But uh, I agree with Anita. Get out there, you know, in the struggle. Meet people. Get to know them. Uh, if you really want to read some books, I would say uh, maybe Always Bring a Crowd by um, uh, Claude Lightfoot or uh, Hammer and Ho. Uh, these books kind of give you some practical experiences about movements and how do you get involved and uh, those kinds of things. So um, those would be my recommendations if you really wanted a, a book to start with. Okay, good enough, fair enough. Those are two good ones. My life has uh, always bring a crowd and, uh, and uh, Hammer and Ho by Robin Kelly. One which tells the story of the first Chicago steel worker and the other of the Communist Party in the great state of Alabama, uh, where my family is <coughs> from. Um, at least part of my family, my father's side of my family, mama's side of the family, New York City. Um, so my choices, let's see. How about Elizabeth Gurley Flynn and uh, her book, Rebel Girl? And, and then the second thing I would recommend is her speech before the uh, Congress and the UAC committee, which was rated one of the uh, 100 best speeches of the 20th century, where she puts forward the, and answers the vicious charge that uh, the Communist Party was conspiring to violently overthrow uh, the US government and pull a coup d'etat. So um, those are my two recommendations. Read some Elizabeth Gurley Flynn. That'll do you, your mind and your heart some good. And we need both. We need, we need a strong heart and a strong mind. Well, um, let's get back to politics. Uh, uh, Anita, Steve Bannon was, uh, uh, the House voted to hold that uh, blankety blank in contempt, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, they want to compel him to testify. Happy about that? Well, sure. It's good to see somebody throw the book at him. I I think he can't just uh, thumb his nose at at uh, Congress, uh, you know, forever. He could get away with it while his pal was uh, in office, but not. Not now. So uh, I think, but he is taking a page from the Trump playbook that just, you know, delay, 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 and try to, you know, wait out the clock until things die down. So, but I, I think it's going to be hard to get away with it this time. And I, uh, I look forward to seeing what, um, what he's compelled to, to reveal um, uh, when he finally does uh, uh, get deposed um, before that committee. Um, maybe, and and I'd like to know more about his uh, connections with right-wing groups throughout Europe, 
uh, especially too. Uh, I don't know whether that will come up, but I think he's really part of a dangerous international uh, right-wing uh, movement right now. And I think we have to really pay attention to him a little bit. You're echoing Hillary Clinton and the vast right-wing conspiracy and this is of international dimension. Scott, uh, Liz Cheney is saying that the reason that the boy don't want to go to the hearing is he's trying to protect Trump because Trump was in on the plan for January 6th. Uh, you think she's right? Uh, I think he's trying to protect a lot more than just Trump. Um, you know, I, I think if, uh, if all goes as, as I hope it will, um, he's gonna get up there and be forced to, to name some names of the, of the people who finance this, not just the, the leaders of the Proud Boys and these other right-wing groups, but you know, the money behind them and, and where it came from. And that's when I think we're gonna start seeing, you know, when, when, the, when we move to the stage of being able to hold those people accountable, uh, the billionaire and, and hundred millionaire uh, funders of these things, um, that's when we'll be making some real progress against the, uh, the fascist threat. Um, and I hope it's soon, because it's dangerous. Well, the first step in the progress, Michael, has to be to move those bills, uh, human infrastructure, and uh, um, the other one that they said they're not going to vote for unless they pass the first one. Um, <clears throat> but Simon, <laughs> Semina and uh, Mr. Manchin are still blocking. And uh, Manchin said he's gonna leave the Democratic Party and become an American independent. Do you support that? I you know you support independent politics. What's wrong with that? You know, it's, it's a shame because um, the people's movements, you know, all these different groups that really came out in 2020 uh, to defend democracy against the fascist danger, they really had in their heart, you know, I feel that um, if they could get a Democratic majority in Congress and get uh, Trump out of the White House, that uh, true progress could be made, or at least, you know, the beginning of it. And so the fact that this, um, I don't know this, I don't know if he's an opportunist or what, but Joe Manchin, you know, switching sides uh, and, um, and blocking this bill, along with cinema, it's a shame. You know, they've really let the country down. In terms of him switching parties, it wouldn't surprise me. The governor of West Virginia, his name is slipping me right now. Um, he switched parties. He was a Democrat uh, or a Dixiecrat, I guess you could call him, and uh, became buddies with Trump and then switched shortly after Trump was elected, I believe in 2017 or so. And so wouldn't it be surprising, um, you know, whatever. But the point is that um, he clearly needs to be replaced. He needs to be replaced by his constituents. Uh, with someone who um, truly is going to represent their interests. And I would say the same thing for cinema as well. It's just a shame that, um, you know, before us, as we've mentioned before, there was a L LBJ or uh, FDR-like um, administration, uh, d domestically at least, ready to take place. And it's being blocked by these two uh, senators that played, a, I guess we could say, a positive role in the overall defeat of the, uh, of the fascist danger, the, or the, I guess the setback of the fascist danger. But now they're only you know, kind of putting fuel on the fire to bring it back. So it's a shame. Well, you know, Rosanna, the, I was listening to a program the other day and they said that, you know, LBJ Johnson, Lyndon Baines Johnson, you know, for years, I didn't know what that stood for when I was a child. <laughs> I had no idea what that was. Anyway, he had a, a um, I didn't know what JFK stood for either. <laughs> Nobody. They didn't teach you that in school. Um, but they said that he had a 140 seat margin in the House, and something like 20 seats in the Senate. I'm not, uh, uh, Anita, you look confused, but that's what I heard. And uh, he had a big margin. Now it's 50 50 in the Senate and three or four in the House. You know, isn't that the problem? I mean, it's too close to call. and. And, uh, and what do we do about that? And not that the answer is simple. I mean, it's kind of a tough situation, no? It's a very tough situation. I, I think um, it's almost like uh, the country itself is gerrymandered in the way it divides up um, uh, states and, and gives each 
each of them two representatives in the Senate. It's really um, going to work against progressive uh, forces uh, for the future, uh, just the way the Senate is set up. Um, so I think that will be a problem. And of course, Joe Manchin, if he switched to the Republican, if he became a Republican today, then Mitch McConnell would be uh, the uh, leader of the Senate. And we don't want that to happen. Uh, so I, I, this is the first I've heard that he's thinking about just becoming an independent, but he certainly isn't, uh, isn't supporting the Democratic program of uh, Biden right now. So it's, it really is uh, such a missed opportunity and cinema is just a disgrace. She, um, she voted against uh, Trump's tax uh, cut to the rich. Um, and then now she's voting, now she's in favor of it, in favor of continuing it. So it really doesn't make any sense. She doesn't, she doesn't seem to have a coherent uh, plan. She just wants to be an iconoclast and just a pain in everybody's side and accept her, her donors who I'm sure are really loving her right now. Well, Rosanna, an important sign of what the direction of the country is gonna be is gonna come up in November with the local elections and uh, you know city councils and mayors and uh, maybe, I don't know if state legislatures are up or not. Uh, are there elections out there in sunny California, local elections, school board, and that kind of thing? Um, no, I, not that I actually, not that I'm aware of. Mm. Um, most of it will happen in June of next year. Uh, those will be the local elections. But I think, you know, all of this is showing us the importance of elections, the importance of, of really getting out there to vote for people that are really going to represent our, our interest as a working class um, and, and, and the importance of getting some of these people out to really send a message about what we, what we want and what we need. And we don't need these you know politicians that are bought by big corporations. We've seen what the country can do uh, with this pandemic and, and we see what the workers are willing to do in, in spite of this pandemic, you know, 160 strikes is huge. It's huge. Where the, the media kept telling us, oh no, everybody's desperate for a job uh, and all of these kinds of things, but that we're more desperate for a better living standard, you know, to be able to survive. And, and we're willing to put, um, you know, our lives on the line. We were, we're willing to get out there in the streets. So um, I think that this is some of the uh, really important lessons that we're seeing and hopefully, you know, we don't forget them in the future. One of the big issues is going to be school board elections and the radical right really targeting them. I was hearing the other day from Rosanna that, that uh, in Texas, they say you got to get because of this attack on so-called critical race theory. You know, you got to get equal time to the opposite view. And uh, well, I was talking to one woman, she's a third grade teacher. She said, they don't even come up in the third grade. How are you going <laughs> to, this is such a fake issue. But the other thing that they were saying is that you got to give equal time to, if you teach about the Holocaust, if you mention the Holocaust, you got to give equal time to Holocaust deniers. What? Rosanna, did I hear that right? I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, the, the proof is proof. There's just no denying the Holocaust. You have so many people who have recorded their history. Most of them, unfortunately, the survivors ha have died off, but they made sure that their history was recorded. They made sure that it was in, in you know, ways that everybody has access to it. Uh, and it's ridiculous. It's a way to erase history, the true history and the, and the, and the disgusting and shameful uh, things that people have done. And so I think we need to fight against it. First of all, there were comrades in Southern California, Admiral, you remember Admiral? Mm -hmm. And uh, Admiral and his wife? Yes, I do. His wife was a Holocaust survivor. Yes, she was. And she had the number. Yes, she did. Scott, how in the hell you gonna, you gotta give equal time. Well, it, come on, man, explain that shit to me. 
it shows how successful the extreme right has been at kind of weaponizing, uh, you know, ideas like free speech and tolerance, things traditionally associated with, um, you know, the liberal left or whatever, have now become these sort of rallying cries. Like you have to, you know, you can't discriminate against Holocaust deniers. You can't, you know, you can't cancel, uh, you know, pro-slavery force, whatever. Um, and it's it's nonsense. It's a clear attack on democracy, and it shows. It also shows the the kind of weakness I think of the liberal framework for understanding a lot of these things, because when it just becomes about plurality and diversity and tolerance, you lose something. What it's about is equality and democracy, and if tolerance and diversity are attacking equality and democracy you're not really fighting for those things. You're fighting for fascism. That's my position. In other words, we're not fighting for the right to do wrong. I mean, it's like... <laughs> okay, I think that just about does it. Michael, we got any webinars coming up this week? We have on, yes, this Sunday the 24th, we have an event at 7 p.m. Eastern time on rural America. And comrade Tim Wheeler will be uh, leading that. Uh, he lives in Sequim, um, uh, Washington, which is a rural community there. And he's going to be talking to us about um, how a lot of our rural um, uh, population, working population, kind of was swayed to the right through some of these ideas and how we can convince them um, to really uh, work for the benefit of the entire class and to get away from some of these, you know, reactionary ideas. So I'm looking forward to it. 7 p.m. Eastern, you can uh, register online at cpusa.org. You know, there's a mistake in that in that pamphlet. It says that the majority of people who came in January 6th were people from the rural areas. But that's not true. They did a study, Anita, and they showed that, uh, I think you, that, the, that it was kind of equal. A lot of people from the urban areas came too, so, right. you know. You, you they did a have study, a and I also sat down and, and, and listed all the people who were arrested so far from Ohio and looked at where they were from and did a, a study of our own, just the Ohio folks. And it is about, about equal, I'd say most, you know, I, I think some of the most influential are from the urban areas or suburban towns. So. Yeah, suburbs. Right, the suburban people in the suburban. rural areas, they're too busy to go to Washington to just parade around like idiots. I got to tell this story, even though we're out of time. When we used to teach in the YCL, we used to ask the students to close their eyes and imagine a bigot. Then we wait two or three seconds and we say, what did uh, they look like? Did you imagine a good old boy sitting in front of a gas station, chewing tobacco, uh, <laughs> with, uh, with wearing overalls out in the country? Or did you imagine George Bush or Ronald Reagan or the head of Citicorp or Chase Manhattan Bank? <laughs> you know, what is the real source of racism and reaction? And it's the latter. Okay, so thank you, everybody. Stay strong, stay safe, stay in the fight. We'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Good morning, Revolution, y'all. Morning, Revolution. Morning, Revolution. We're down Thank you, for the revolution in the comments.